Okay, Tuesday morning in the kingdom, but it's actually Tuesday afternoon. This morning's intro, the volume didn't work, thanks to the Lily Tomlin mic. But I was standing here in the morning in front of the two trucks in front of the shop, the Dodge Brothers in front of the shop, and I was wearing a hoodie and my jacket because this morning it was only plus 14, but feels like plus 14, okay? I think the month of July is Siamese twins or twins. Yeah, twins month because our temperatures are the same. Okay, but it feels like on the yo-yo scale. All right, let's start here. Okay, but feels like plus 57 on the yo-yo scale. No, it's plus 57 on the yo-yo scale. Plus, but feels like plus 57. Oh my, I'm screwing up the intro. No wonder I only do it one time, one shot, just like writing my books. Okay, and we all know that the 57 Chevy is the most popular Chevy car. Yes, with the big fins on the back to say that you had money. Because you could afford to fill the gas, you know. Because the gas thing was in the, the gas filler thing was in the chrome of the fin. Yes. And the 56 had it in the tail light. Ooh, look at the breeze. That's why we had to cancel the parade today. Yes, we had to cancel it. We should have had the parade yesterday, but no. It was more important that I work on the 37 tribute truck to make sure that the parts from the 37 original one would fit in. Oh, this wind, unreal. We're being punished. We'll have to scroll this way. Look at the flags. They're still folded up in the hose shack for their own good. Yes, on freaking real. So today we were supposed to have a parade, but we're not having much luck. Just like the intro today, that upset me because I couldn't even listen to it while I made lunch. I mean, burnt lunch. It was so terrible. This Lily Tomlin mic and the iPod are almost obsolete. It's on old school. Oh my goodness, that wind is unreal. So today, the staff is going berry picking and fishing. Yes, because we're she canceled everything because we were having a parade. Now we had to cancel, so now she's running around having fun and frolic. She couldn't plan everything. All right, so we're inside the trailer over here, getting organized. Okay, and you'll see that in the videos that follow this video that sure is actually recorded before I made this video, but are you confused? Have a drink. It's like Father's Day in Whoville here. Okay, so today is gonna be just a fill-in day. We gotta get parts ordered, and of course the numbers I'm giving Sir Rodney aren't working, so he's having to beat the computer and I'm having to Google, and it's just unreal. Why can't anything be simple anymore? Let's go back to the 1950s where it was simple. You build a hot rod car and you cruise the streets and you pick up the ladies and take them to Dairy Queen. Yes. All right. Those are the good old days. And then if you brought her home after midnight, her dad chased you with a shotgun. Ooh, that Dirk Bennett sang that song, eh? What was I thinking? He had that little Ford Ranchero, I think it was. Yes. And that lady was in that... White tank top? Oh my goodness. I imagine she did bad things to him. But that's a good song. And this is coming from a guy that listens to rock and roll. Blackie Lawless. All that kind of stuff, you know. Alright, I better go. This intro is boring because it's not an intro. It's a retake. Oh my god. Just like saying I do again. Okay, the plan of the day was to have a parade and then this morning's intro. The Lily Tomlin mic acted up, so I'm only in mono, so now I have to use it. Okay, the wind has gotten up. I don't know if you can see it or feel it like I can. All right, so no parade today, so we canceled. So now we're organizing everything. We move this table back from the shed here. Okay, this will go on Lombard sleigh number three, according to my notes, okay? So this tank shed here served as the basement for the house for a long time, so now we're going to put it up on the sleigh. This is where all the fenders are for all the trucks in the kingdom. Okay, it's best to do all the mechanical first and then go and learn how to do the bodywork. okay? So here's the Dodge parts. I decided to move them out of the storage trailer, the Chevy engine trailer, whatever you want to call it. So everything is in here. So here's the tribute truck grill, garage trailer. Okay, grill shell, that's a grill shell. And there's the original one right there. We had the blue one that was all smashed up because this truck was kind of smashed up on a head-on or whatever. But we didn't get that in a great divorce. All right, let's go check to see what else I was doing. Okay, we're over at the hose shock here. And when I pulled the motor out of the 37 Dodge there, the tribute truck, I took it apart, okay? So that's what we were doing back in the day. 
making things because we couldn't buy them back in the day. So that's what we did. So the bell housing is pretty good shape for all those years. That's 38 years that was on that motor. Okay, so over here, we got the motor here. We're going to take it apart and regasket it and check it over to make sure there's nothing come falling out the oil pan. And then over here, oh, maybe I'll turn the lights on. Okay, can you turn the lights on? Can you sound, does that sound better now? Okay, so there's the three-speed transmission when it was a work truck. Okay, the clutch is in pretty good shape. It's a GM 11-inch clutch. We got it at the dealership at the time in Brandon. I think it was Fowler Chevels when they were down on Princess Avenue. Great place to park. It was down there. And then that area became the bus depot, the Greyhound bus depot. So I credit the burntness or smoke show or whatever on it from being a welding truck or work truck and getting stuck and everything like that. So it's not bad, okay? But we'll see what Sir Rodney has in stock to place it out. So we're lining up the parts here and getting organized because we have to do the tribute truck the same as the 37 Dodge original. Okay, I walked over to the parts trader here. I'm climbing up the stairs, the grandpa stairs or whatever. You can carry parts and everything. So there's the original 37 Dodge rad cradle we had on the uh, tribute truck last night there is the tribute truck rad cradle right there so that we really shows you what we have to change out and there's the grill that i made in high school okay so we painted it or whatever it was it served its purpose and then we got all the parts for the 37 dodge and then oh go this way all right seeing so the 37 dodge was rolled in 84 we used the side of the box here this is the tribute trucks box so we put this side of the box the missing side right here onto the 37 dodge that got us up and going so now we need to find a box or i think we'll just make it because in this day in technology i think we can just make the side panel that we need but the truck was rolled pretty hard and we basically bought a bunch of junk overpriced junk but at least we can tell about it and talk about the story okay all right, it's lunchtime. Let's go see what the Dodge Brothers are doing. Okay, I used the mini hoe to line up the Dodge Brothers here. So having that front bumper on the tribute truck works out pretty good. Just pick it up and carry it. And then same as the 37 Dodge original. Sure beats you the way we did it back in the day, using the Massey 44 to push things around. But we got it done back in 84. So those were good times back then. All right, let's go have some lunch. Okay, I'm over in the hoe shack here. I've been working with Sir Rodney over lunchtime, okay? So this clutch, flywheel and pressure plate was all purchased through the GM dealer in Brandon, Fowler Chevolds. That was in downtown Brandon. I also forgot to mention, it was a cost from Mr. B's. That's when Mr. B's bar was a rock and roll place. And then they switched to Encounters Nightclub, which was the disco bar. And that's where the sister hung out. So, yes. So if you read my Naughty Natalie books, it's kind of funny how this all takes events. Okay, so we know the clutch is toast. We could put it back in, go another 35 years instead of 38 years, but let's fix it right because we got it apart because I'm still in good health enough to manhandle the stuff around. So maybe 10 years from now or 20 years from now, I'll be wearing a diaper. Okay, so I dug out the original purchase thing for 1984, okay? So here's the GM part numbers, okay? The advent of computers back then coming in in the mid 80s, okay they wrote on stuff and they were handwritten everything out okay so that makes it hard to read so that's what we find so i had to redo it but this is fowler shovels or whatever in brandon that's the gm part number okay and we were all proud because basically we bought the clutch for a 69 corvette because corvette means power horsepower yeah right okay wrap your ass in fiberglass okay so there's the price i paid in 1984, $238.15. Okay, so now we're trying to figure out this clutch, okay, this flywheel here, because it gets confusing. Yes, because they've changed the part numbers over, okay. So the flywheel that we just ordered for the, um, ah, what, which truck is it? Okay, it has, it's L, LWF 101, and this one here is LWF 104. So talk about confusion. And I think it's the bolt hole sizes here. I'm not really sure 
How come they're so close? There used to be a different part number. It was Z296. We bought that clutch flywheel plate last summer for the 39 and the 67 Chevy. Now they say you can't. So you got to have this WF104 or 101, you know, so confusion. So we're working with Sir Rodney on that. Okay, but that tells you the details that we kept back here. So here's the flywheel here. Now Sir Rodney says it's not available. So we're getting confused with the new numbering system. Okay, back a couple of years ago when we decided we're going to build the 37 Dodge Tribute truck, I made sure that we had the aluminum bell housing. Yes, the aluminum bell housing because they're well sought after because you want to put this three-speed or four-speed transmission on it. Well, we have a problem. Okay, that is orange, Zena says. That is orange, okay? They're a smaller hole. This is the original one out of the 37 Dodge. It has the five inch hole plus the bolt down here for the clutch. Okay, so I was all happy when I seen this because this one has the hole for the clutch, but it's a four and a half inch hole. And then over here, this one has no hole for the clutch and it's a four and a half inch hole. But this one here, nobody had drilled holes in it. Somebody drilled a bunch of holes here I don't know, to let the water out or something like that. We have no idea why we have these extra holes here. So now I'll have to find an aluminum bell housing with a four, five inch hole so we continue the build of the tribute truck motor. Okay, just finished coffee in the kingdom there and we had no alcohol in it. Yes, the staff uh, messaged me saying she's going fishing now. She picked a bunch of berries. Hopefully she shares them with me. Okay, so I went on the internet and that casting number there tells it all. This is a 1973 to 78 truck bell housing. Yes, truck bell housing with the five inch hole. Okay, so that works out good. So we know what it is. And then I went on eBay or Googled it and found out in eBay, there's guys down in Northern USA that have these at a reasonable price. Plus eBay offers a cheap shipping. So being aluminum and small, it can uh, come up by post office. Okay, I made the mistake today uh, okay, let's go in the shop here. Okay, I made the mistake this morning of figuring things out. All right, so this is the motor out of the 37 Dodge. It's running the one uh, pulley for the fan belt, okay? And that's a short water pump, okay? So it's short. And then we need the flat pulley down there. And then we call it a third uh, belt or whatever. So you add it on, so there's a space there. So I went on the internet and spent a couple of nights, you know, having a beverage and looking to figure it out. And I'm positive I've gone through all my collection or in the shed there or the parts trader. So I do have the flat pulley here, okay? So I need the water pump pulley and then that third one, the one with the space. So I went to, to Speedway Motors, tossed everything in the cart. So... One pulley was back ordered out of stock, so a $34 pulley, they wanted $150 Canadian to send to UPS. And then UPS will get it to my door and then send me a bill saying there's more charges. We did this last summer, or yeah, last summer. So a simple $30 item can turn into $300 once UPS gets it. So that was it for that. We just aborted right now. So we have to watch our costs and shipping and everything because it's just unreal how they lambaste us and screw us over. And then UPS and FedEx will turn around and send you an invoice and hound your ass for a dollar fifty-three or a dollar or four fifty, whatever. So you just tell them on the phone, go screw yourself. I paid the original bill, how you come up with these items, you know, and they won't release the item until it's paid in full. So it's just a joke, okay. All right, so this clutch flywheel here, I told Sir Rodney I'd figure it out, okay. So in 1984, I paid $238.15. So in today's world, that's $699.34, okay. But back in 1984, I was working at a dry cleaners at $3.55 an hour. And I was working after school. So any money I got, I had to buy gas for the 67 Chevy truck to travel the 15 miles back and forth to the small town of Alexander so, so I could basically sleep in the pink house because we worked all the time, okay? So then in 2023, we're working not getting paid. So 
I think I'm better off now just to relax and have fun and live off my YouTube and Amazon money. But I'm glad to see that the prices have dropped on this. I'm, I'm not sure what Sir Rodney's charging me for it or anything like that. But just looking at Rock Auto and the price for that flywheel on Rock Auto in the Canadian money was about $150. So that's pretty good. And we base everything on Rock Auto. It's not for the purchasing aspect. It's for the history and information and same as Summit Racing. Those guys are really good at putting details on the products that they're selling. All these other guys just, I don't know how you say, scan the picture and throw it on, tell no information. So how do we do business? All right, let's get this stuff organized so we know what the, we have the part numbers. We know what we got coming. And we're going to check this flywheel here to the 350 four bolt. Because when you're running two part numbers side by side with a 101 and 104, we're not taking a chance. So if I can tell Sir Rodney that this flywheel here fits on the four bolt main or doesn't fit on the four bolt main uh, uh, 350 four bolts, then we got a problem because he has one sitting on the counter there or in my cart to be shipped north. Well, we're going to make a trip south to enjoy fast food like a Burger King Whopper and maybe a steak, a keg. A steak at the keg. Look, I'm getting so flustered just thinking about delicious food. Okay, this is one of the joys of living in the wilderness Alaska, but in northern Manitoba. So it's going to take me 30 minutes to double check the flywheel on the motor here. So I'm using my mini hoe here. Plus, this is my third time recording this because of the Lily Tomlin mic is acting up. So I'll probably spend more time recording this to document this to make sure we know what it takes to live at the end of the world. So we got the uh, floor extension out because we had to run the little uh, engine stand out the doorway so we can do a dead lift here, okay, because this engine's been fully assembled. One of the joys of this being that 350 with the four bolt mains, which is not my motor, I don't know where my 400 went, okay, is it doesn't really say what year it is, what block or whatever they used. So we know when you go to order flywheels and stuff, they're different, okay. So this is the flywheel off the 37 Dodge, which we know has a cross reference and everything like that. So we're finding out it's loose in here, okay? So the other one being an old one number, hopefully it's tight and it fits this one here. It's not the bolts or the bolt pattern size, so we're, that's what we're finding out. So this is working out good. So that's the joys of the new world where they don't mark the part numbers or put details in the part numbers. You, you have to double check everything, work with your parts man, because the cost to get stuff to the end of the world costs us money and then we're stuck with it because you can't return it because of the cost to get it uh, shipped back south. So when I travel to Winnipeg, I want to pick up two complete clutches, one for this motor and one for the 37 motor, which is over here. That way these two trucks can be put back together at the same time. So if I make one mistake, I'm making two mistakes. Tuesday morning here in Whoville and I had the weekend off filming because we weren't doing much and what I was doing was way too boring to even record. But here's a little update on my blue roots that I got. They are all sprouting up really nicely as you can see there. So now it's time to get ready and head to the kingdom and hopefully we have a parade today as long as this weather out there stays nice. As you can see here, my strawberry is doing very nice. It's getting pretty big and red. And I got a flower coming in over there. So that means I got another strawberry. If we look over here, these things are called stringers and they will go out and then seed up and you can cut them off and plant them in and then you'll have more strawberries. So once these guys get big, I'm gonna let them grow out until they're bigger. And then once they start sprouting and rooting, I will cut them off and add them into the rest of my strawberries. This is the only plant that has the stringers going on here. Every other plant I have right now, no stringers have come out of them. So I'm gonna leave this alone and see what happens. After lunch here in the kingdom, it got extra windy this afternoon. So that means no parade because if we do a parade, all you'll hear is the wind noise in the background and that's not what we want. So I'm gonna go berry picking in the back here and see if we can find anything. And then after I'm done berry picking, we're gonna go out fishing and we'll take you along with me. Great Alaskan wilderness. We got some blueberries here, not as many as I was hoping, but we'll pick the good ones and leave the rest until they are ready. And then I'll come back and pick them again later. Let's go over here real quickly and show you what these ones look like. Cause some grow better in the shade and some grow better in the sunlight. Like if we go over here, these ones are in the shade and they're actually growing a lot better than the ones that are in the sun over there. Now it's time to get picking since it is hot out and windy.
found another spot in the kingdom there. Once I got picking, it didn't take very long. Yes, I know they have to be sorted, and there's a few little white ones in there and non-good ones, but that's okay because these guys will get cleaned, and I'll go through them and pick out all the bad ones. Now it's time to head home and get ready to go fishing. Down behind Whoville at Dinky Bridge again. I gave it a week in hopes that more fish will come down this way, and also by taking that jack slash pike out of the lake, before it will clear it up and hopefully the pickerel will be swimming through here now it's time to get set up and go fishing second cast out and it looks like i caught another jack slash pike but this is a decent size so we're gonna keep it and go cook it over the fire tonight once we're done we're gonna tie a string to him and put him back into the lake so that way he doesn't die well i was here for a couple hours and all i caught was this bad boy kind of looks bigger than my last one i wish i brought my measuring tape but now it's time to cut the head off get the guts out then we'll take this back into Whoville and we'll go cook it down by the lake. All right, and this is what we are left with. I cut the head off and I cut the tail off. We got the guts out on the inside. Now she's ready to go over the fire. Now we're going to head back into Whoville, let the dogs out, and then we'll go down to the lake and we'll cook this bad boy with some rice again. Stopped in the kingdom on the way back to Whoville, grabbed some lemon juice, some rice, and some corn to cook over the fire tonight with my fish. That right there is my garbage because you always take everything back with you that you bring out there. Now it's time to go inside, let the dogs out, edit the videos I did today, and then we'll go down and cook this fish. But you guys won't see it until tomorrow's video because that's the end of my day. Okay, 6 o'clock in the kingdom, we're calling it a day. We didn't get much done today, but we actually did a lot. Checking and double checking saves on the parts coming wrong. So now we know we got the correct parts coming. So Rodney was able to figure out the flywheels, which was good because there's no cross-referencing. There's no numbers or measurements or anything like that. So you have to take a chance and we're ready to go here. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Too bad we didn't have a parade today. Hopefully tomorrow because they're uh, getting tired of this. We got to get this these vehicles moved around and everything. All right, look at the flags. They're safe in storage. Let's go walk the dogs, drink some beer, and make a video. Talk to you later.